Hello my precious friends, I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It's our eighth lesson on a given form three mathematics topic called sequences and series. So we are looking at our second example involving geometric progression, which is a past case equation tested in 2020, uh, paper two, question number two. So it reads that the sum of the first two terms of an increasing geometric progression is 20. So of course the sum of the first two simply means that if we take the first term, then of course sum means addition. We add the second term of this particular AP, we are supposed to get uh, a positive uh, 20. Now we know that the first term of either an AP or a GP is always denoted by small a. Similarly, we know that the nth term of any given uh, geometric progression is given by AR to the power of n minus 1. Therefore, if we want to get the second term, so our second term will be equivalent to, we are going to have AR to the power of 2 minus 1, because the number of terms will now be uh, 2, which is equal to AR to the power of 2 minus 1, you are going to get 1, which is the same as saying AR. Therefore, uh, we can rewrite now uh, this particular equation that we are given, and we can say that uh, the first term plus the second term will be, the first term of course is A, then of course plus uh, the second term is AR, so plus AR, so these ones should give us a uh, positive uh, 20. So this one is equals to 20, and therefore this one will become our uh, equation Roman 1. Then we'll go to the second statement that we are given, whereby we are told that, the sum of the second term and the third term of the same GP is equal to uh, 30. That when we add the second term and the third term, this particular sum should give us a positive 30. So remember we already have the second term which is uh, uh, AR, so what we don't have is the third term. So we know that the third term of a GP will be given by AR. Now the number of terms will be 3, then of course minus 1, which will be equivalent to uh, AR to the power of 3 minus 1. Of course you're going to get uh, 2. Therefore, if uh, I combine uh, the equation for the second statement, so remember the second statement was that uh, the sum of the second term and of course the third term is equal to a uh, positive 30. Therefore, if I combine the two statements, I'm going to have the following. So the second term, the sum of the second term and the third term is 30. And our second term was AR. Therefore, if I take AR, then of course I add uh, the third term, which we have found as AR squared. So plus AR squared, uh, this particular sum is supposed to give us positive uh, 30. But we realize that if we factor out R, from the left hand side of this particular equation, we are going to end up with uh, R into A plus AR, which is the same as the left hand side of our first equation. Therefore, I'm going to factor out R from this particular equation so that I can use substitution method. So I'll end up with R into, uh, so I'm going to remain with A, then of course plus uh, AR. Then of course the whole of this is equivalent to uh, 30. Now, I can name this one as my second equation. Then I'm going to say, uh, substituting, substituting, uh, substituting equation Roman 1 in equation uh, Roman 2, we are going to get the following. So when we substitute, this is what we are going to end up with. Of course, where I have um, A plus AR, I'm going to substitute with a positive 20. So in this particular equation, where I have A plus AR, that is here, I'm going to substitute with a positive uh, 20. Therefore, uh, we are going to end up with the following. So, equation Roman 2 will actually become R into A plus AR. Of course, A plus AR is equal to 20. That is courtesy of the first equation. So, this will be 20. Then close the bracket. I continue with the second equation, which was equivalent to a positive 30. So 20 times R, I'm going to get uh, 20R, of course, which is equals to a positive 30. Then I'll divide through by 20. I also divide this side by uh, 20. Of course, the 20s are going to cancel out. Therefore, R 
will be equivalent to uh, the zeros and zeros will uh, cancel out so r will be equivalent to uh, 3 over uh, 2 3 over 2 now there are other versions in which uh, we can uh, express our solution for r so similarly we can say that our value of r can as well be given as r will be equal to uh, 3 over 2 is the same as saying one whole number and a half similarly r can also be given as 1.5 so that is uh, what we are calling the a common ratio of this particular gp which we were asked to find then um, uh, we also look at the third example which is also a past cases equation tested in 1995 paper one question number 10 it reads that the first comma the third and the seventh term of an increasing arithmetic progression are three consecutive terms of a geometric progression Therefore, we are going to find uh, that is the first term, the third term, and also the seventh term. If the first term, we are told that the first term of the arithmetic progression is equal to 10, find the common difference of uh, the AP or the arithmetic uh, progression. So, the first, the third, and the seventh term of an AP. So, we know that uh, the first term, of course, of an AP, uh, the first term of the AP uh, will be given by A. But you are told that we take the first term of the AP to be equivalent to a positive 10. Then, of course, uh, for us to find the third term, we'll need the formula for the nth term of any given uh, AP. So the nth term of an AP uh, is given by A, then, of course, plus N minus 1. Then you multiply with the common difference. Therefore, if we want to get uh, the third term, we are going to have the following so our third term uh, of the AP, uh, the third term of the AP uh, will be given by, so we'll take A, but of course our A we are given as 10. So this one should be A, then of course plus uh, 3, uh, then minus 1, then multiplied by D. But because you are already given the first term which is 10, we are going to end up with A will be 10, then of course plus 3 multiplied, that is 3 minus 1, you're going to get positive 2 times D you're going to get a uh, 2d similarly our seventh term of the ap will be given by the following so the seventh term seventh term of our ap uh, will be given by uh, a then of course plus uh, 7 minus 1 then we multiply with d but because we are given the first term of the ap as 10 so this will give us 10 then of course plus 7 minus 1 will get a uh, 6 then of course multiplied by a uh, d now, we are told that the first, third, and seventh term of an increasing arithmetic progression are three consecutive terms of a geometric uh, progression. Remember, the word consecutive simply means following each other. And therefore, the terms of our geometric progression uh, will be given by, so uh, one of the terms will be 10, then the following term will be the third term of the AP, which is actually uh, 10, then of course plus uh, 2d then uh, the next term of this particular gp will be the seventh term of the ap which we are given as 10 then of course plus uh, 6d now once we have these we can utilize the concept of the common ratio because we know that any gp uh, must have what we call the uh, common ratio now from this particular given terms uh, if we want to get the common ratio of the GP, it will be given by, you take the term ahead, divided by the previous term. So this is 10 plus a 2D, then of course divided by the previous term is 10, which should be equal to the common ratio using the next two terms will be, I uh, will take 10 plus a 6D, then you divide with uh, the term coming before this particular term, of course, which is a 10 then plus a 2d therefore i'm going to pick uh, this value and i equate it to this one without the r so this one will simply be a 10 then of course plus a 2d uh, divided by a 10 this one should give us a 10 then of course plus 6d then the whole thing divided by a 10 then plus a 2d Therefore, uh, remember we are required to find the uh, common difference of the arithmetic progression. 
So the common difference will just be the value of D. So for us to solve for D, we are simply going to cross multiply this equation. So this one multiplies with that. And of course, this one multiplies with the other equation. Therefore, uh, we are going to end up with uh, 10, then of course, plus uh, 2D multiplying with uh, other uh, 10, then of course, plus 2D. Then the whole of this should be equivalent to the 10 will multiply with this particular term here. So we'll have 10, then into bracket, a uh, 10 plus a uh, 6D. Now, if uh, I expand the left-hand side, we are going to end up with 10 into bracket, a uh, 10, then plus 2D. Then, of course, we are going to add a uh, 2D into bracket, a uh, 10, then plus 2D. So this one will be equivalent to a uh, 10 multiplied by 10. I'm going to get positive 100, then plus 10 multiplied by 6D. I'm going to get positive a 60D. Now, if I open the brackets on the left-hand side, 10 by 10, I'm going to get positive 100, then plus 10 times 2D, I'll get a 20D, then plus a 2D times 10, I'll also get a 20D, then 2D times 2D, a 2 by 2, I'll get positive 4, then D by D, I'm going to get D squared, which should be equal to 100 then, of course, plus a 60D. Now, I'm going to add the like terms together. So, I'm having 100, then plus a 20D plus 20D. I'm going to get positive a 40D, then plus 4D squared, which is equals to 100, then, of course, plus a 60D. Now, if I collect the like terms, I'm going to get the following. So I'll take 100 to the left so that it becomes a negative. Similarly, I also take a 60 to the, a 60D to the left. So I'm going to end up with a 100, then plus a 40D, then plus a 4D squared, then of course minus 100, then minus 60D, then on the right hand side, I'm going to uh, remain with a zero. Now, Positive 100 minus 100, you're going to get 0. Then plus, uh, we still have 40D minus uh, 60D. We are going to get negative uh, 20 uh, D. Then, of course, we still have a 4 uh, D squared. That is this one here, uh, which should give us 0. Now, remember, what we are having here is what we call a quadratic equation because it is in the form of uh, ax squared plus b uh, x, then of course plus uh, c. So this is a quadratic equation which can be solved uh, using a variety of methods, but I'm going to use a factorization method because it is easier uh, to work with. But even if you use the quadratic formula, uh, you should be in a position to get uh, the same answer. Now, I want to rearrange this. So this is the same as saying a negative a 20 a d then of course plus a 4 d squared which should be equal to 0 now remember that whenever the value of c is 0 then you are allowed to factor directly so uh, because d is common i'm going to factor out d so i'll have d into bracket a negative 20 then plus a 4 then of course d then the whole of these is equivalent to 0 now, this can be rewritten as D, then into bracket, then of course negative 20, then plus a 4D, then the whole of this is equals to 0. Remember, this factorization is only allowed if the value of C is equals to 0. Because you saw the value of C was equal to 0. That is the value having, uh, that is the value lacking the variable. The variable in this case is D. Uh, yeah, the variable in this case is D. So because the value lacking the variable was 0 or it was uh, getting eliminated, then in this case you can simply equate uh, directly. Now, this is simply a stage that you are founding in the factorization method. So from this stage you simply say either, uh, either uh, D is equal to 0 or it also means that negative 20, then of course plus uh, 4D will be equivalent to 0. Therefore, this one means 4D will be equivalent to, if 20 crosses equal sign, it becomes a positive 20. So I'll divide through by 4. I also divide through by 4. So of course, 4 and 4 will uh, cancel out so that we find our value of D uh, being equal to 
uh, 4 here 1, 4 into 20, that is 5 times. Therefore, our value of D uh, will be equivalent to a uh, positive 5. Now, but we know that D is actually representing what we are calling the uh, common difference. Then, of course, the value of common difference must be either a positive a value or a negative value, but the value of D cannot be equal to 0. Because if you're dealing with a, a value of D, uh, which is equivalent to 0, you mean that your AP will actually be, for example, if the first term is a 1, then the second term must be 1, and the third term must be 1, and the fourth term must be 1, such that when you get the difference between these two will be 0. So, of course, this is not an appropriate uh, AP. And therefore, we are going to conclude that a D, a D is equals to 0, cannot be a valid a solution. So this one is not uh, not valid. D is equals to 0 is not a valid a solution because it will not give us an appropriate uh, AP. And therefore, we are going to conclude and say that the value of D, it must be equal to positive uh, 5. Because this one makes um, a reasonable uh, AP. For example, the first term could be 1. The second one is 5. The second one is a 10. So this is a realistic uh, arithmetic progression. And therefore we are asked to state uh, that is find the common difference of the AP. We'll say that therefore uh, the common difference, the common uh, difference of the AP, the common difference of uh, the AP, of the AP uh, will be given by the value of D, of course, which is equals to uh, 5. So thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you will get notified. So in the next uh, class, we will be looking at questions worth 10 marks. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you very much.